everybody. My name is Kevin Dobis, and I'm going to introduce the Wave Judge 5000 to you today. Uh, this is the latest product in the Keysight portfolio. Um, we have became a part of the Keysight fan just recently in the past few months. So here is what the Wave Judge looks like. Um, the hardware platform is a very small one rack unit high um, hardware device and it is modular so depending on the plug-in modules we use will will tell us you know which frequencies and which which uh, bandwidths we're going to capture um, so that's the wave judge hardware it's controlled with a windows pc so there is a wave judge software um, package that will be loaded under the windows pc and essentially what the wave judge does it is a rf sniffer okay so that is the kind of the high level overview or the high level um, tagline of you know what does a wave judge do it captures an rf signal for both 4G and 5G, and the software residing on the on the laptop will do the analysis. There is also a use case that um, some of our users already have baseband IQ. So if if you are developing the baseband modules of your of your equipment, or you have baseband um, information, it actually is not necessary to use the Wave Judge hardware. You can take those baseband IQ files and import them directly into the WaveJudge software for, for analysis. Um, <clears throat> WaveJudge is very flexible, software-defined radio. Uh, you can see that you can actually cascade two or three or four or more chassis together to build a larger system, supporting both 4G and 5G, and it will support everything in the 3GPP specs um, all the way through release 16 today. And release 17 is has been developed, but it's not been released yet. And here is essentially what the Wave Judge actually does. So in a, in a 4G or 5G network, I show you that we have some base stations on the left. And base station could be an E node B for 4G, a G node B for 5G, a small cell, or even ORAN. We support the ORAN technology as well. So any one of those base station um, you know, hardware devices will be transmitting a downlink signal towards the UE and the wave judge hardware will capture that RF signal. And then the same thing happens on the uplink. On the uplink, the UE will transmit an uplink signal towards the base station, and the wave judge will capture that uplink. And this can be done in a cabled, conducted lab environment. Okay, so if you have this, if you have this equipment set up in the lab, we, the wave judge will use a splitter to capture that RF signal. So for example, on the downlink, the typically what we see in the lab in the conducted environment is a cable which is connected between the base station and the UE. Okay, and the same thing happens on the uplink side. Um, you'll see here that the wave judge can be used with real UEs, and it is a multi UE device. So you can have one UE or hundreds of UEs. It can also be used with a UE simulator. Keysight offers a, a very nice UE simulator, and if you're using that UE simulator with your base station, um, the, the wave judge will capture all of the RF signal for that uh, for all of those UEs that are being simulated. We also support over-the-air captures, which I've shown here on this picture. For example, you can simply connect a downlink antenna to the wave judge. You can connect an uplink antenna to the wave judge on this module, and now the wave judge will capture the RF signals for whatever RF network happens to be in the vicinity of this wave judge. What I'm showing you now is the actual real wave judge GUI and I have a log file opened up so you can see this is a real live capture. In the middle part of the wave judge GUI is the protocol decoding engine and the right side is a layer one phi layer analysis that I mentioned earlier. So first let me discuss a bit about the protocol decoder. Um, you'll notice first of all that it is possible to control in the settings which protocol layer is displayed and which protocol layer is hidden. Okay, so right now I'm only showing the upper layer protocols. For example, layer, you know, layer three protocols, which is the RC, NAS, and the RATCH. So when I would show that, it shows me a very nice UE attach because we show both the uplink and the downlink on one window. So everything is displayed on one nice window and we can see the uplink message coming from the UE, whether this is a real UE or the Keysight uh, UE simulator. We can see the UE is trying to join the network, and then the base station is sending the random access response, requests, setups. So w you can see very nice the upper layer protocols and how the UE is joining the network, 
We can show, we will display and decode all of the NAS messages. Now security is being turned on, ciphering is coming in. We have a reconfiguration and a reconfiguration complete. So again, if you're interested to look at just those upper layer protocols, interoperability between your base station and uh, all the various vendor UEs, um, we can show you that in a very nice window and we will hide all of the other protocol layers. However, if you're interested to look at layer one, transport blocks, I will turn on the transport block capability, and now we show all of the physical channels. We can see PDSCH, PUSCH, the control channels, PDCCH, PUCs, all of the physical channels are displayed in addition to the upper layer protocols. We can also show DC, DCIs, MIB, SIB, RLC, PDCP, all the protocol layers are available, and the wave judge will decode each one of those messages if you expose them. Let me move now and talk a little bit about the physical layer, the layer one type analysis on the right-hand side of the window. However, before I do that, let me highlight something that these two windows are connected together, and this is another very powerful part of the wave judge um, capability. What it means is the protocol list is actually connected to and correlated to the, to the physical layer, layer one analysis on the right side. What, what I mean by that is we can show you analysis on the right side of the window that's related to one particular message. So if you choose or click on one particular message, we will show you the characteristics of that one message on the right-hand side. So, for example, the time domain power chart. You see there's a red line here. What that red line is telling me is the location of the message here, P-U-S-E-H, is here. Let me show you how that works. If I click another P-U-S-E-H, I can scroll up in my protocol list, and when I find another P-U-S-E-H, when I click on it, you'll see that that red line on the right-hand side will actually move to the new location of the P-U-S-E-H that I've clicked on. So here, I just found another P-U-S-E-H. When I click it, we can see that the red line has moved, and what that allows me to do is, if I would like to investigate the characteristics of this P-U-S-E-H, I can use my toolbar at the top of the window to zoom in on that particular location. So it's really easy to find any protocol, any message, any physical channel. Easy to find that on the time domain power chart. Now, let me mention that on the right-hand side, we have a lot more than four analysis windows. You know, I show constellation, time domain power, spectral. But if you right-click, you'll notice that we have an awful lot more than four. So I. Today, I will not be able to show you all of these, but you know we have a lot of different charts and graphs that may be helpful in your testing, including baseband IQ um, and beamforming. In the 5G world, you know we can do some beamforming charts and graphs. We can show you the phase and the power. So you can see for each one of these categories, there is a list of available analysis on the layer one physical channel um, that you know I won't be able to cover today, but um, I hope that's obvious. The other thing we do is we show these charts for both the downlink and the uplink. So I've already shown you the uplink time domain power, but it's very easy to change that to the downlink side. Okay, so every one of these charts and graphs can display the information for downlink or the uplink.